Shoulder dystocia is one of the things that we probably as physicians fear more than anything. And what it is and it involves, the shoulder comes down and the head will deliver out of the perineum, but the shoulder actually impacts on the pubic bone, on the back side of the pubic bone. And the thing we fear about is it is unpredictable. We have times where we have a large baby, 10 pound babies that mom may just push twice and this baby will come out no problems. We have six pound babies but we get shoulder dystocias on. So no matter what, and we've looked at different ways of predicting it, we can't do that. And uh, so it's a scary event when it does occur. Shoulder dystocias happen about 5% of the time in our deliveries. And the problem is when they do occur, they are a surgical emergency. And what I mean by that is we have people running in the room, we need extra hands at the time of the delivery uh, to help us dislodge that shoulder. And what happens is it impacts on the back side of the pubic bone. And once it impacts, it can cause injury to the baby. We can get a stretching of the nerves, what's called the brachial plexus nerves. And the majority of the time when they do stretch, they do come back and the baby's arm works fine. It may be a few days, it may be a few weeks, it could even be up to six months. But there are those babies, and this happens less than a few percent of those 5%, it'll be a permanent injury. Things that we can do to prevent shoulder dystocias. We do know a risk factor is a large baby. We call a macrosomic baby. So we always tell moms if they watch what they're eating, don't gain excessive amounts of weight during the pregnancy, they're more prone to have a smaller baby. The more weight you gain, the bigger the baby can be. Gestational diabetes can cause a larger baby as well. And actually those shoulders will be a little bit bigger on those diabetic babies. They get a little more of a fat pad on their shoulders. And when that's present, those shoulders are harder to pass through the pelvis. So we want good uh, monitoring of the baby's, uh, of the mom's blood sugars during pregnancy. If she is diabetic, she needs to follow that diet, occasionally put them on medication to control their blood sugars. So we'll need mom to do her job in watching that. And other than that, there's unfortunately not too much we can do. We can't prevent them. They're going to happen. If I am concerned about shoulder dystocia, I know the baby's larger, so I'm at a little bit of a risk for this to, to happen. I'll have things prepared. I'll warn people outside if there's additional doctor outside in the waiting area or in the, out in the uh, center portion of our labor and delivery. They'll sit outside the door and wait if I need them for help. I'll give them that warning. I'll let the nurses know this as well and prepare to have the mom's legs being brought back and there are different maneuvers we can do. So we'll have the nurses ready. I'll say to them, just be ready, I may need help with this baby. And so there are things I can do to prepare for. Um, with shoulder dystocias, when they do happen, it can be scary for the mom because all of a sudden things change. We're going from a nice normal delivery, things are happening, the baby's head's coming down, she's been pushing, everything's going great, to all of a sudden the baby's head comes out and we see what's called a turtling sign and the baby's head will actually come back up into the perineum and suction against the mom's bottom. And when that happens, we know we have a shoulder dystocia. So calm goes to people running around in the room. And what we'll do is we'll call for additional help outside. The first thing we'll do with the mom so she knows what's happening is we'll bring her legs back. We actually flex her legs back up towards her chest. And what this will do is open up the pelvis and many times that baby's arm will slide up underneath that pelvis and we'll be fine. Now if that doesn't work, we have another maneuver, and it's called suprapubic pressure. And what we'll do is the nurse will actually push above the mother's pubic bone and push down and try to dislodge that shoulder from above and let it slide underneath the pubic bone and become a, more of a bleak presentation. Then we have mom push and we deliver the baby. And that works quite often as well. We kind of go through a, a, a sequence of events here. So we bring the legs back, try the suprapubic, that doesn't work. Often what I'll do is I'll go up and we'll do what's called a wood screw and I actually have to put my hand up by the baby's shoulder and internally try to ro this, rotate this baby into a different position so again the shoulder will be an oblique presentation and mom can push and it'll slide underneath. Sometimes that doesn't work. We go to our next step and that's the delivery of the posterior arm. We'll actually try to go up inside the uterus and sweep that arm around and have it come around the baby's head so that actually clears the mom's perineum and then the anterior shoulder has come time to come down. That's our fourth maneuver. And the last maneuver we have, and it's, it's one that we don't like to do, and it's one that we don't have to do very often, luckily. I've been doing this for 23 years now, and I've done it once. And it's called the Zampinelli maneuver. We actually take the baby's head, and we push it back up inside the vagina. And we go running back to the back, and we actually do a C-section at that time. So we deliver the baby from above. 
and it's dangerous because I have to dislodge and push the baby's head back up where we can create neck injuries in the baby and other problems of tearing and all that within the mom, but it's sometimes our last maneuver to save this baby.